Hello everybody, Isabella from Pry Tire and today we are looking at a early 17th century get-up based on a portrait of an of Denmark, um, so Jacobean wife of um, the James I of Scotland and England. Um, we are looking at a portrait that was a very much a question in nature, um, so it was a dress that was very much um, used to riding to hands. But at the same time, um, it's not really that much different from everyday court outfit at all at that time. Uh, it definitely doesn't have a typical sort of masculine doublet, although there are masculine characteristics in it as well. So we'll take it out through there and see how it's to ride in one. So, let us start with the usual layers, not as different to Elizabethan ones at that time. I've got linen stockings, knitted, with beautiful and very comfortable and fashionable um, shoes from American Duchess, nice leather. My base layer is obviously a linen chemise. Unfortunately, it's not really correct for a chemise, I took the wrong one. But just imagine it has a little standing collar here and you'll be not far off. <laughs> Um, chemises at the time tended to be either very plain or very decorative, it really depended um, if it would be for court wear, I probably would get one with applications of lace, as you can see quite often in portraits, um, but plain one will do just as well, and it's much easier to, to launder which, what you really want from clothes you're planning to wear for exercise. So the usual stays first and these ones are based on effigies um, stays so um, 1602 I believe 1603 um, we have the original effigy stays um, in which were used obviously on the effigy of Elizabeth um, and they are made as stitch stays but there is recent evidence suggesting that they actually were supposed to be covered stays so not stitched through but with a decorative silk linen on top, but obviously for effigies it was not used. Um, so I've used my own pattern for it, but I amended it with the details um, and the newest findings um, based on the Patterns of Fashion a book, uh, currently available from the School of Historical um, Dressmaking, costuming, sorry, um, I'll put a link here, <laughs> I'll put a link here, I always have problems with names. So these were a bit of an um, experiment marrying modern techniques with, with, uh, with original ones and they are made in canvas and fustian and lined, so not lined, and bound with leather as well and outside is a silk damask so all leather would make a very nice binding and quite a sturdy one too and uh, they are boned with shoulder press, shoulder. <laughs> they are uh, burned with synthetic whale and obviously the original ones use just natural synthetic, uh, natural whale bone. So this one is a synthetic one, very much similar to the original one. Different, different widths because um, the originals have two quite wide strips, and let me have a look here, you can see the white strip here, that's a much wider strip of baleen that was used, and the rest is um, 6 and 5 millimeter synthetic whalebone from So Kirby, a good supplier. So eyelids are bound in linen thread, and the usual lacing begins. It's a spiral lacing, which actually takes much less time than cross lacing. The original stays have about 29 eyelets, mine have a little bit fewer. But because you don't have to really let go of one lace and grab another one, it's much faster to lace with just one lace. The original eyelets are not offset, uh, we often see it in later stays, offset lacing, to make sure that the edges are even, not so much in these ones. I'm just trying to see if I'm not 
missing any. quite a comfortable pair, they do not really provide a lot of reduction and they were supposed to be used for everyday wear. Having sat in an Elizabethan saddle, at that point all the displays were very much a requirement for fashion wear, I would think that for a longer riding or sort of proper hunting or hawking, it's much easier or at least more comfortable to go for a bodice petticoat, which was very much still in use at that time, especially by lower classes, but not as fashionable. But a properly stiffened bodice petticoat would serve the purpose of holding you up and holding your assets in the correct position, but at the same time it would not have the long point that would be quite cumbersome at sitting for a long time in the saddle. So that's something I'll be using for um, early Elizabethan riding and possibly very early Jacobean as well. But as it is, let's, have, let's give these ones a go. And as you see, the lacing takes just a few minutes. And yes, I would have a servant to help me with that, but can't afford one. Don't really need one either. Right, we're almost there. Let me just adjust the assets. quite a lot of space at the waist. Probably not small enough to, to serve for court wear, but very comfy for riding. Very often in stays at that time you also have eyelets all around the waist, the effigy stays do have them as well, to attach either petticoats or farthingales. Mm. And no farthingales needed at the moment. However, we do need bum roll. Now, we have a small one and we have a bigger one. I'm going to go for a bigger one. It will be a not the most comfortable thing to ride in, but let's have a look. At least if I fall off and follow my hips, I'm, I'm good. I think I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'll just chuck it underneath here. So yeah, fashionable hips. my little under petticoat which is not strictly needed but it's cold at the moment so whatever helps is appreciated and a bigger petticoat in silk rock grain decoration this one was definitely one to be seen should my skirt flutter in the wind Is a lot of petticoat. 
and a lot of hip, it's all calf which pleated to the waist. Now for the skirt and bodice, the original painting um, shows quite clearly that the fabric was um, damaged with a faint pattern. I couldn't find anything suitable, so instead I used stamping technique, also used in the period. Let me grab this one to show you a bit more. So you end up with a very faint pattern stamped into the silk with tools and with heat. I will pop a couple of videos at the end of how I made it so you can have a look. So you do get a very nice but very subtle effect. It took some time but I think it's worth it. So let us have a look. Skirt again. It has a shaped waistband to accommodate the point of the bodice and the skirts are cartridge pleated and lined with silk as well. Um, guard and hem is made in velvet, velvet band and decorated with silver braid. So that's a lot of skirt to ride them. That's a lot of skirts. Full stop ready. <laughs> Looks so nice at the end. Yeah. I think I've got it. Right, hooks are nice at the back. That's the skirt. Loads of them. But I can just sit, so I should be okay in the saddle too. Now, that's the interesting bit. The body is very much. Um, similar to double bodice is very, very masculine in, in look, but this one has a very low decolor touch. Well, low decolor touch. Obviously, for the day and for riding, it's covered with chemise or a partlet. But for court, you can actually have it completely bare. Maybe some jewelry, sometimes a little bit more than just the collar touch would be bare, as you can see from Jacobian portraits. It also sports double sleeves. <laughs> So you have main sleeves, hanging sleeves attached to the bodice for good and additional sleeves that you actually put your hands in with some lace cuffs that could be exchanged quite easily. At the moment they're just tacked on inside the bodice but you can remove them in a couple of minutes and put them back on in a couple of minutes, either changing from different style of sleeves. Um, if you're riding obviously they will be getting a little bit mucky much, much sooner. So that we got for a cleaner. Um, or they could be pointed to, to your bodice the petticoat, for example. And the most interesting bit is the collar worn over a rabato. And a rabato or sapotas is the wire structure that supports the flat, in this case lace collar. And it's pointed to the little collar at the back and to the front of the bodice. So it would be a little bit difficult to get into it, but I'll, I'm going to give it a go and see what happens. Right, I need to make sure that I've got right sleeves. And maybe undo the ties in front of the rubato first. Right, okay. One sleeve is on. Itself is also quite heavily boned in front of the pelt. And I think I almost done the second bit. Mm -hmm. I think I'm almost there. And 
partners just close us with buttons, my favourite. The buttons are just plain buttons wound with thread and it shouldn't be too difficult to put them on. Having frozen fingers is not very good. You can find well this costume, including a pattern and instructions, will be in my Equestrian Dressmaker book. So if you want to recreate something like that, you are welcome to the book. But if you want a if you want a graded pattern, there are very similar styles in the Tudor Taylor publication and they sell patterns on Etsy as well. So do have a look. The tools are used for stamping the fabric were from Tudor Taylor's as well, and they were great. Last button. And we're there. God. Almost done. We've got a little decoration to be true to the portrait. To pin to the top. Maybe this way. I've got more cuffs. I need some blink. I can unblink it. Help, help. <laughs> right, let me just lace the front shut. If I can find it. There we go. Front lace is shut, and I probably will need to adjust the ties at the side of the rubato. Frozen fingers. <laughs> that, this side. There are little hooks here that I can lace. On. And you can see that in the original portrait as well. And the other side. Oh, this is very loose.
So yes, we've got a weird thing around your neck. It's a good strap. This kind of borders without any skirts or tabs, so it would just, um, it has hooks and eyes at the back that connect these two so that they would not get disconnected during the riding. And this bit is quite a nuisance, so possibly put it underneath the other side. Let us actually tie it with my rubato to keep it in place. Last thing you want when you're riding is things going all over your shoulders. Not that you do very fast riding at that point, it's not really possible on the saddles in question. But there we go. So, some more bling. And a hat. It's a pretty peculiar style. A very tall hat. These are the ones that would be changed quite often. But these ones, you can actually use them for wear as well. They have an opening that your, head can, your hand can go all the way through. And you can button the upper cuff as well, if you want a bit tighter fit or maybe warmer fit. But as it is, they're quite a bizarre little style. <laughs> very much for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's a slightly different era than a lot of Victorian ones. 
But um, one thing that I'm going to have more because of the Equestrian Breastmaker book, it um, basically covers the outfits from medieval till um, well, Edwardian. So I'll be having much more, many more videos of different eras. Look for Stuart, look for Georgian, medieval, all kind of fun. And if you want to support me before the book comes up, I mean, if it comes out, please buy it. Um, yeah, more than welcome to buy me a coffee. Thank you so much.